Hey, what's up? It's Mr. Wynn, and welcome back to Wynn Chemistry. Today, I'm going to go over how to balance equations, but first, you have to put the names into formulas. So, the mechanics of balancing is no different from what I taught in Part 1, but you might have to review stuff from my Chapter 8 and Chapter 9 playlists, which is ionic names and covalent names and formulas. Sometimes chemistry is more of a language lesson than it is a science lesson. So you have to understand that sometimes you're asked to balance a chemical equation and you're given just the names and you have to rewrite those names into formulas and translate it into something that you can balance. Well, do understand that there are seven diatomics on the periodic table. These diatomics exist as bonded pairs in nature, which means they are never found alone as a single atom. They're always found as a bonded pair. So the seven diatomics are hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. So H2, N2, O2, F2, Cl2, Br2, and I2. And there's a clever mnemonic device that can help you understand or remember some of these diatomics better. The first is have no fear of ice cold beer. The other one is horses need oats for clear brown eyes. The seven diatomics only exist as a bonded pair if they're alone if they are by themselves. So for example, if you have hydrogen reacts with oxygen to form water, the word hydrogen means to write down H2. The word oxygen alone, where it's not bonded to something else, means to write down O2. Now when it says it forms water, which is dihydrogen monoxide, then you have to go by that formula. Sometimes it will have a 2, other times it might be a 1, a 3, a 4, a 5, who knows? It just depends on the formula, the prefixes that are given. If, if it's covalent or if it's ionic, you have to crisscross the charges. Well, water is H2O. You wouldn't write H2O2 because when have you ever seen water written that way? Never, right? So H2O is the formula for water. So even though the oxygen is diatomic, when it bonds with hydrogen, it now has become something else and you have to rewrite the formula the correct way by going off of the name or off of the charges. Here's another example where you might have to translate the names into formulas. So it says aluminum reacts with chlorine to form aluminum chloride. So aluminum is just Al, so you're gonna write Al reacts with, literally just means plus, so Al plus chlorine is Cl2 because it's a diatomic. So the word chlorine has been unchanged and you have to recognize that chlorine is one of the seven diatomics. So not only are you gonna write the symbol, but you will include a little two next to the chlorine. So, so far we have Al plus Cl2 and it forms aluminum chloride. So now the ending change is Ide. And remember from your chapter eight, ionic compounds, naming and writing formulas, aluminum chloride, you have to crisscross the charges. So this now becomes AlCl3. Okay, so I understand chlorine is a diatomic, but only when it's by itself do you retain that too. Anything else, you have to crisscross the charges or do you have to use the prefixes, which will tell you how many chlorines to use. Let's change the names into formulas first and then we'll balance. So magnesium bromide is MgBr and a little two because you have to crisscross the charges. Magnesium is plus two, bromine is negative one. When you crisscross it, you're gonna get MgBr2. Chlorine is a diatomic. It's one of the seven diatomics. So you're gonna write Cl2 and this will make magnesium chloride. And again, you have to crisscross the charges by coincidence, you're going to get an MgCl2. I understand it's diatomic, but that's actually from the charge. And then bromine is one of the seven diatomics. You're going to write Br2. So we're going to go ahead and count left and right all the atoms that are there. Okay, so we have Mg, Br, and chlorine. So on the left, we've got one, two, and two. And on the right, we're going to count one magnesium, two chlorines, and two bromines. So it looks like it's balanced already. So the last thing to do is find the sum of the coefficients. And this is a one, 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 and one. 
So it's actually a sum of four. You don't want to put zero because even though you don't have to write the ones in front, you have to assume that a one is there. So let's go ahead and write the names into formulas again. Write out the charges. Aluminum is plus three. Nitrate is a negative one. And nitrate's a polyatomic. So after you crisscross the charges, that's what you have. Let's move on to sodium hydroxide. Sodium is plus one. Hydroxide is negative one. And the formula is OH. And again, we're just writing out the charges and crisscrossing them. Please review the chapter eight playlist if this is throwing you off. Okay, so aluminum hydroxide is ALOH3 and sodium nitrate is NaNO3. Okay, now we're gonna try to balance by counting up what's on the left and what's on the right. Eventually you get to a point where you can kind of do these in your head without having to show this work every single time. Some equations are easier than others to complete in your head, but um, I'm just gonna go ahead and write out all the steps. Okay, so on the left side, I see one aluminum, three sets of nitrate, one sodium, one hydroxide, and again, hydroxide is a polyatomic, so it's just better to keep them together just like that in the parentheses. And we're gonna count up what's on the right. Okay, and let's find out what's mismatched. So it looks like nitrate and hydroxide are not balanced. Okay, so you always wanna balance your polyatomics first. So let's see what we're gonna do here. We're gonna put a three in front of that compound. Remember, this will help balance your nitrate because the nitrate is actually in parentheses. Okay, and so there are now three sets of nitrates, but it will unintentionally change your sodium to three on the right-hand side. Okay, but have no fear because we're actually just gonna come back to the left side and we're gonna to try to fix this over here. So we will definitely need a three in front of the sodium hydroxide. So that will change my sodium to three. So now we're looking good with sodium. And we actually kill two birds with one stone here. Placing that three will also change your polyatomic count to three. So everything now looks balanced. Remember, there are ones, which you don't have to write, but when it comes to the sum of coefficients, you have to include the ones so that you add up these numbers correctly. We've got one plus three plus one plus three, giving us a sum of eight. So again, the actual mechanics of balancing the equations are no different from part one. So this one involves a d-block metal because you see the Roman numerals and iron is a d-block metal. So again, write out the charges and then crisscross them. So we've got Fe2O3 plus carbon monoxide. So it's just CO. No need to crisscross the charges because it's covalent. Iron is just iron, just write Fe for that. And then carbon dioxide, everyone knows, is CO2. So on the left and on the right, let's count them up. Let's see how many irons oxygens and carbons we've got. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. Iron, oxygen, and it looks like carbon also. Okay, uh, so on the left we've got two irons, four oxygens, and we've got one carbon on the left, and on the right it's one, two, and one, respectively. Okay, let's get to balancing this. So the thing is, forcing a four to come out will actually not balance the equation. Right, if I put a two there, I'm actually caught in a dead end and I can actually never balance my carbons correctly. So um, just through years of experience, I know that we might have to force a six on this one. So sometimes when it comes to balancing equations, you might have to guess and check. Sometimes four will not work. So you need to force a six to come out by placing a three in front, okay? Because we've got three oxygens plus a three there will give us six. So now that's a better common multiple to work with. I can place a three here in front and that would change my carbon uh, as well. So we've got six oxygens and three carbons. And the last thing to do is just place a two in front for the irons. 
So the sum of our coefficients is 1, 3, 2, 3, leaving us with a sum of 9 for this one.